Hi, my name is Nick Souza. By popular demand, I want to show you a quick screencast of how I use Zotero. I'm going to assume that you know of Zotero already, that you know that it is a bibliographic manager, that it can store all of your citations like this, and you can share your citations with other people, and it can store your PDFs and manage everything for you. So, I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that I use to make my workflow very quick. Let's see. So the first thing I use is Google Scholar all the time because Scholar indexes most of the journals and books and everything else that I need in most of my research. Now, it doesn't do a terribly good job of Australian resources and neither does Zotero, unfortunately. Uh, but lucky for me, I don't do a lot of uh, Australian research. Most of my stuff is based overseas. So, with that in mind, um, let's say I'm looking for an article by Coase, the nature of the I type it into Scholar and I see that there it is, right on JSTOR. I can click through very easily or I can check the other places that it's hosted if I don't like JSTOR. But I do like JSTOR because it's usually very good. It has very good bibliographic information, so I know that I never have to edit them if I get the, if I save to Zotero from JSTOR and it automatically will download full text files for me. Now that reminds me, before you get full text files, I use Zotero to manage my PDFs as well. And I have a little plugin which helps me out. It's called Zotfile. Now Zotfile, when you add it in, allows you to do a couple of things. When, it will, when you download PDFs, or when Zotero automatically downloads PDFs for you, um, this will rename them into the library that you like or the folder that you like and I have quite a well-organized library as you see here with all of the PDFs that I rely on that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis so using Zotfile to keep them organized is really useful for me so you go to Zotfile for your browser and, and you download it for either Chrome or Firefox okay. once you have it uh, you configure it like this you tell it where, which folder to watch for new PDFs that you add manually, and I'll show you that in a minute. And you should tell it where you want to save files, and you tell it how you want to save files. So I like to save files in author, year, date, title. Okay, so back to Coase. Here is my JSTOR page. I hit this button, and you'll see that it's getting not just the article but also the full text PDF. Great. Now JSTOR has been going a little bit slow for me so we'll just let that run in the background for a bit. Uh, well, there we go. Okay, so you go to your library and say I'm, say I'm now looking for my article by Coase. You can see that it is attached here. I can double click and it opens up in my PDF reader. Uh, which you can only see half of, I imagine. Okay, so it opens up my PDF reader and I can then go ahead and highlight what I like, save it, close it, go back to Zotero, and here's the cool thing about Zotfile. In the file, you can tell it to extract annotations and it will read that PDF file and pull out all of my highlights. And you can see here that I have a highlight with a pinpoint citation. So next time that I am searching for the assumptions of economic theory, I can just search for it here and it will automatically have everything I've highlighted in the PDF and all my notes come up in Zotero. Really, really useful because then I can do something like this. So I've just opened up my word processor for the first time. I obviously have to select a style. We're here in Australia, so let's try out the Australian Guide to Legal Citation. Should be version three. Hit okay, okay. And then I quite easily cite Goes for the proposition, and I remember the pinpoint citation was 387. Bam. And 
And there we go. Side. Okay, so next. I can do that from a lot of different sites. So as I said, I use Google Scholar a lot. Uh, JSTOR is a good repository of PDFs. Um, so you can get things directly from Google Scholar. You use this button and you pick the best looking citation and you can enter it directly, but sometimes it's not quite as accurate as some of the dedicated repositories. Um, I use Hein Online quite a lot. It's Hein Online has nice metadata as well, particularly for US law reviews. Now the problem with Hein Online is unfortunately it doesn't give you the PDF automatically. So to get the PDF from Hein Online, you hit the download button. And here's where I'll show you how Zot file again comes in handy. Download. I don't know what's wrong with our internet today. It's a little bit slower than usual. Okay, and you see, I'm going to save it into that folder that I said before. It's a terror import, the one I'm telling Zot file to watch for any new files saved there. And I save it in there and it's got a really bad name, 25 Berkeley Tech LJ. But here you see Zot file picks it up. And all I have to do is then click on the Zot file window and it will automatically add the PDF to my article. I want to get rid of this snapshot. It's just a picture of the Hein Online webpage. And you can see that it adds my PDF right there, full complete metadata. I can open the PDF. Again, I can cite whatever I like. I can, sorry, I can um, highlight whatever I like. I save that in there. I can extract the annotations and it'll be there with me forever. Sync to the cloud with my Zotero account and my Dropbox account. I highly recommend you back up your bibliography. Next. Um, I can cite from all sorts of other things as well, but you should probably know that already if you're familiar with Zotero. Good metadata on certain sites, metadata on other sites isn't that great. You can cite directly from the library catalog, which I like to do. And you can cite from ePrints. which is also nice. So, in summary, very quick rundown of my basic workflows to show you how that works out in practice. So let's say here I am and I remember that the basic justification, um, guess, economic justification of copyright law. And I remember reading something by Cosma and Landis on the economic structure of copyright. So there it is, Hein Online. Quick scan down. I'm going to grab it from Hein Online. Saved in my library. Luckily, here's one I prepared earlier. You can see my big library. If I go to this, open it up. I've got all of my documents I can go through. That's full text indexed, all searchable. My highlights are persistent. We can grab that, copy anything we need, and then go through and cite it very quickly. There we go. So that's a quick introduction to my workflow and it explains, I hope, why you might want to use Zotero because I think it's actually much, much faster than using, um, than doing citations manually. I think it's more stable than EndNote and it has some really nice features and PDF management options. You can save the PDFs to your tablet as well. It will also keep your highlights persistent over there. Um, the last thing is that I've written multiple jurisdictions quite a lot and multiple disciplines quite a lot. 
So one thing I really like to do is to be able to switch my citation style. So for American publications, I have to publish in Blue Book from AGLC. I hit OK, and it automatically reformats all of my citations as Blue Book citations. I can do the same with many other citation styles. Um, I might use Chicago Manual of Style or Harvard Author Date format. There we go, in-text in citations, and we have whatever we need. All right, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Let me know.